I'm about to set up this brand new call tools account right in front of you from start to finish so you can see. I'm gonna show you where I get my clean data. I'm gonna set up my phone numbers and I'm gonna show you how to use call tools. You're gonna listen to me make these calls and I'm gonna show you my exact strategy on how I'm gonna make multiple six figures this year on call tools. Call tools is my favorite dialer. It beats Mojo, it beats Vulcan, and I'm gonna to explain to you why as we continue. The first thing you need to do is sign up for call tools. So go to calltools.com and you need to talk to a sales rep in order to sign up. You can't just like make your own account. So to make this easier and more cheaper for you, I have a link down below. It's $50 off your sign up. Click that link. It's going to take you directly to my sales rep and he's going to take care of you. All right. So the first thing you're going to need to do is turn your account into an agent account. So go into the account, go into users. And if we look over here, agent is not a green check mark, meaning you cannot dial on this account. So go to controls, edit, scroll down, and click this is agent box. And now that you're an agent, you can make dials on this account. Under account and settings, if you scroll down to FDNC suppress, we wanna call the federal do not call list. And the great thing about call tools is you're anonymous the entire time, like no one can trace, no one can find you. like. These numbers are burner numbers. So if someone tries to find your phone number, they cannot look you up. So to be able to call the do not call list, click on this. Okay, so just fill out the FDNC certification. I just click the middle box and press certify. And now Liz, you can call anyone you want. All right, great, that little gray box is not there anymore. Now that box isn't there, change FDNC suppress to allow, and then mobile suppress to allow. And now you're able to call uh, cell phones too and then click save at the bottom. Caller ID is required. Okay, so it's not allowing me to save because there's no caller ID which is required. So let's go to PBX up here. Now we need to purchase some phone numbers. So Liz, a phone number is $2 a month and you should have 10 phone numbers because this is a 10 line dialer. Are you okay with that? All right, so let's go to phone numbers. We're gonna purchase, um, let's name it Liz, destination, agent Liz. Mm, we'll, we'll allow inbound calls. What's your area code? 985. 95. So this is how you buy a phone number, Liz. Pick your time zone. We want 10 phone numbers. Does that look right to you? Then confirm. Purchase these 10 phone numbers, continue. Okay, so in a bit, we need to wait. It doesn't take long. It's finding the 10 numbers for you. And there it is. Here are your 10 phone numbers. Oh, Liz, check this out. So if you go to caller ID, there's this reputation section. And if you it's if you look here, it's it's empty right now. Your reputation's clean. But at any point in time when you're like, why is no one picking up my calls anymore? Hop into PBX, caller ID, reputation, and it'll say like, you've been marked as spam likely. At that point, you just wanna delete these numbers and just go buy, buy more numbers. All right, now that we have phone numbers, let's go back into account settings and finish this up. So caller ID strategy is local presence. Caller ID, it, it doesn't matter. Just pick one. Allow FDNC suppress and allow mobile suppress. Now we can call phone numbers that are cell phones and on the do not call list. Save. This is gonna be important. I need you to watch this part. I get my information from call information because this is where you can get very, very clean data. There's no expired, there's no for sale by owners. It's just circle prospecting data. But I think it's the best one. I've got a link below for $200 off your first year. So I go to prospect IQ here, okay? You're gonna to wanna, to, this is what you're gonna to wanna to do every time you get new information, okay? So go into prospect IQ and by zip code, all right, so here's my strategy, Liz. Fi I find the price points near me that are the most attractive. Like, I don't wanna drive too far out. I wanna be within 30 minutes, okay? And basically what you wanna think about is like, where do I wanna build my business? Where do I wanna build my reputation? Where do I wanna build my farm? Where do I wanna build my local presence? I focus on data in certain, two certain areas. Okay, and they are above a million dollar price point. And so every day I'm just stacking leads, I'm just talking to homeowners and stacking leads of people who wanna eventually buy or sell in the million dollar price points. Like I don't wanna waste my time at like two, three, four hundred thousand dollars when there's a million. 
Of course, I'm in Seattle, so like this is a much higher price point than most of the country. So for you, like, I'm not saying go luxury, go like above, uh, above the average price point. For me, so if I wanna dominate like this area called Kirkland, these are all the zip code, Kirkland's pretty big. Like, it's this large stretch of land. And so I just typed in Kirkland zip codes and I type all these zip codes in. Okay, so if you were to do that, Liz, you'd be, it says you can enter up to 25 separated by commas. So 70360 comma, and then like add in whatever else. But just for this, like, okay. let's just do 70360. All right, watch this. This is how you get the cleanest information, Liz. You need to look at this. Confirmed homeowner, head of house. Okay, you want to talk to who owns the home, like who makes the decisions of the home. It's usually going to be a dude. It's usually going to be the man of the house. And you want to talk to that person because like you don't want to talk to, you don't want to talk to the wife that makes no decisions. You, wanna, you don't want to talk to the daughter or the son. Length of residence, you want to, you want to, you don't want to talk to someone that just bought the home. You don't want to talk to someone that's like freshly in the home within three years. You want someone that's at least been there for five plus years. Okay, so I, I press five here. You can also do family position, male head of house, or I guess female head of house. I guess it's 2024, those exist now. Um, and then phones only. It'll give you everything. Um, but I, you, you, it, it's the best for call tools when you press phones only. Press all records. All right, now you have a, a thousand thirty-seven records. You want more than that, okay? You want to stack. You want to get a bunch of like, you want to get it. You want to get a bunch of records. But we have a thousand thirty-seven records right now. Download to computer. CSV for call tools. And you can take a look at what you got here. You got their emails. Doesn't matter. We're, we're not going to include the emails in a bit. I'll show you. All right, so press download. Okay, here's the thing about call tools that you need to do every time, all right? It's kind of dumb. Make sure you're paying attention. Liz, man, what is going on with your internet? Here's what you need to do every time with call information, okay? Watch this. You need to scroll all the way to the bottom, all the way to the bottom, and there's gonna be a blank row. And if this blank row is there, you can't upload into call tools. So you need to go and delete this row. And then save it as a, as a CSV. Now that we've removed that last line, now it can be uploaded into call tools. So let's go back into call tools and click on data and contacts. Now that we're back into data, we wanna go to contacts and then press upload contacts. We're gonna upload the file, Liz reformat. And this is how you, all right, you, you wanna be careful here. So first is the first name. This is the last name. All right, so these two this one's going to be the address. This is the apartment number. But in call tools, there's no thing for apartment number. So we have to leave that blank. We have to leave that blank. Just know that sometimes you're calling a condo. And on, when it says the address, it might not, it, it won't show the condo unit number. So just keep that in mind that like, Sometimes you won't have the full address because it doesn't have the condo number thing, the unit number thing. So when you're on the calls with these people, if you know it's a condo, because there's a Zillow button, you can click to see what kind of property you're calling. If it is a condo, just confirm like, hey, which unit number are you in? And they'll tell you which unit number they're in. Or you can just cross-reference with the Excel sheet that you have here, the, the CSV file you have here. So leave this line blank. This is the city or Huma. City? Yeah, this is the city. This is the state. Here's the zip code. 
Okay, watch this. So this is the phone. <laughs> this is the phone number. Phone number one, and this is phone number two. Okay. So, not all that. Like it's not always blank. Sometimes it will be blank. So just memorize this format here, because like you will get confused sometimes. This is the email. Don't put in the email. Don't put in the email. Don't put in the email. Next. Okay, so this is how you're going to want to um, keep track of... This is how you organize your leads. So I'm going to create a new tag, and you're going to want to do this. 70360. And now all of these contacts are going to be tagged with this zip code. And that's going to be important later. Upload. Okay. So it all looks good. We have 782 flagged FDNC phone numbers. But because earlier we made it so we can call these numbers, we're good. Press close. All right, now we need to go into live filters. I'm gonna delete these. Okay, hold on. It's, it's saying that these are all in a campaign. So real quick, let's go to contact center campaign. Let's delete these campaigns. These are example campaigns. Delete, delete. I'm gonna show you how to re-upload these in a bit. All right, we're gonna go back to datas. Live filters, this is gonna be important. You need to understand how live filters work. This is a little confusing at first, but like when you, when you really understand it, it's not that difficult. So we're gonna create a live filter. Name, um, let's just call it, um, Huma. All right, that's the that's the that's the name of the city, I guess. Um, so just make a live filter per city or per zip code or per county. It depends on how you want to set this up, but let's do it per city. Make sure it's active, uh, and we want to check that box. We, we want to make sure this box is not checked uh, because we want we want FDNC phone numbers in here. All right, so this is important. These are the tags, okay? This is important. So in this live filter, we want to include which tags we're calling. So we are calling the 70360 tag, okay, in this live filter. And here we want to exclude all the people that have you have appointments scheduled, not interest, wrong number. Okay, so in this live filter, we are calling everyone with the 70360 zip code, and we are not calling people who have an appointment scheduled or who are not interested or wrong number. This live filter filters these people out. Uh, let's do do not call on numbers, do not call this number as well. Okay, so if they're like, hey, don't call me, like, I, I, uh, they're just like pissed. You want to mark that number as do not call this number. And now that it's in the exclude right here, you won't call these phone numbers. So save at the bottom. And in a sec, um, this, this is going to show you how many phone numbers you have to call. There's 1,035 phone numbers in this live filter. All right, now that this live filter's on, now we can go to campaign. So go to contact center, campaign, and we're going to create a campaign. Predictive dialer, we're going to call this Kuma. It's going to be active. And the live filter is going to be the live filter we just made, which is the Huma live filter. So this campaign is going to be using that Huma live filter. Turn on call recording. It's something you don't have to pay attention to, but it does automatically in the background, which is super nice. Mobile numbers allow. We want to call mobile numbers. Caller ID strategy, local presence. Channels per agent, 10 lines. Save. All right, 
and now this campaign is set up, okay? We're basically done. We have just set up your call tools account and we're ready to dial. Now, if you want to dial, you have to click your name up here and then press agent dashboard. This is how you dial. Now we're in the agent dashboard, okay? We were in the manager dashboard the entire time. Now we're in the agent dashboard. We have our Huma campaign here. So we're gonna press join campaign. And you're dialing. This is how you dial. It says campaign ready, you're available. 10 lines are calling 10 phone numbers right now. And the first person to pick up is the person you're gonna be seeing. So I, I was using Mojo previously. It showed you everyone you were dialing. So when I first got call tools, like this was pretty confusing to me because it doesn't show you anything, but just know that it's dialing. Just make sure you're on available and campaign ready. Make sure this is green. And in fact, if you go to campaigns and queues, it should say you're in campaign. Okay. Oh. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Let's skip that one. All right, so let me explain this status here real quick. If you click here, if you wanna stop your dialer, just press not available. Just click that and it'll turn red and you won't be dialing. It'll just stop the dialer. It's like- Can't hey, take your call now. now. At the tone, please right, record right. your message. So when you have finished call, recording, simply- I'm gonna hang up. All right, now it's post call, okay? And we have a bunch of dispositions to click on. All right, sale made, oh man. All right, so actually let's go back into, um, let's go back into the manager dashboard and change the disposition. So let's go to account. All right, so we'll go to data and then contact disposition or call dispositions. All right, so there's, in, in our line of work, there's no sale made. So I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna delete call back. Here, let me see what I'm doing. Okay, so delete the ones that I've deleted. This is going to be the order of your call dispositions. However, I'm going to create one new call disposition, which is lead captured. Save. And this is going to take spot number four. So these are my call dispositions. And in fact, now that we've added in a new disposition, lead captured, because we want to keep track of who you didn't contact and who is actually not interested. Okay. So let's go back into the live, or let's go back into the live filter. Now that we have um, a new disposition, press edit. Okay. And then exclude last call disposition. So you don't want to put no contact in here because if you haven't contacted them, you want to call them back. And remember, these are all the, these are all the numbers that these are all the dispositions that you're not going to contact again. So lead captured because you got their lead, you got their information. Like you've already talked to them. You want to make it so that you don't call these numbers again. So let's go save. And now, uh, now this, uh, now everything's fixed with the, call this position. So let's go back into the agent dashboard. Let's hop back into the campaign. And now we're back into the campaign. All right, so we're dialing 10 lines at once. Our goal is just to talk to as many people as possible and capture their information. Okay, so we wanna get their motivation and problem. We wanna know when they're gonna move, where they're going to move. To. Hey, Dustin. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Hey Dustin, this is Aaron. I'm a local realtor over in Huma. I'm calling about your property on Wellington Drive. You got a minute? Uh, not really. What you need? Yeah, I was calling to see if you had plans on buying or selling a home in the future. Uh, no, not at this time. That's all right. Well, look, Dustin, if you ever did, when do you think that might be? Not anytime soon. Okay. So, look, if I brought you an uh, if I brought you an offer in the next three years, would you take a look at it? Um, depends on what the offer is. Um, whatever, like, the Zestimate is or around there. Oh, yeah, no, definitely not, Dan. Okay.
All right, thanks for your time, Dustin. All right, I've hung up. So I'm, I want to I want to note a few things that I did there. I, I, I asked him. Uh, I, I said, "Hey, Dustin, uh, I'm a local realtor in Huma. I'm calling about your property on Wellington Drive. You got a minute?" He said no, but that was his buy-in. That was his participation into the call. And he has now committed himself. He has micro committed himself into this conversation. Yeah, I was calling to see if he had plans on buying or selling a home in the future. He's going to say no. 99% of the time, it's going to be a no. That's all right, Dustin. Embrace that. Expect it. It's not a rejection. It, it, never take these calls personally. Never, ever, ever take these. Because we are bothering them. You know, we are in, interrupting their day. Okay, don't be afraid of that. It's fine because like after the call, he's already forgotten that I exist, you know, so like don't think about like, oh, I'm ruining their day or or whatever. Like this guy literally forgot who I am already, you know, so you, this is the mindset you want to have. It doesn't matter. I'm never going to think about this guy again. He's never going to think about me again. I'm just popping in like, hey, do you have any plans on buying or selling a home in the future? I know he's going to tell me no. That's all right. Look, Dustin, if you ever did, when do you think that would be? Hmm. I don't know, like maybe in the distant future. All right, so when they say like maybe, but Dustin said no plan. So I said, okay, look, if I brought you an offer in the next three years, would you take a look at it? That's my third way of asking. Would there be some kind of move in the future? He said, maybe, like what's the offer? So I'm like, uh, something around the Zestimate. I, there's, a Zest, there's a Zillow button here that you could click, it takes you to the, uh, it takes you to the Zillow profile of that home. So you could kind of look at what you're dealing with. Also, like if you ever pop into a home that's active for sale, you want to get off that call because you are not allowed to be soliciting active listings. That's, that goes against the, that goes against like MLS regulations. So your goal here is to get their motivation and problem. You need to understand what their plans are. Okay, oh, you do have plans on moving. Okay, great. Where are you planning on going? Where are you going? Why? Why do you need to go over there? What's the importance of that move? And when are you going to do that? What, what's that time frame? Two years. Okay. And now we know, like, you're moving here for this reason in two years. Why is it going to take two years? What needs to happen for this move to happen? And is this a solvable problem? Is this a solvable obstacle? Because if it is, I can try to propose a solution and we're going to meet about that solution. Okay, so I want to move over to Kentucky. Oh, what's over in Kentucky? I got family over there. Okay, great. And when do you plan on moving over to your family in Kentucky? Uh, in two years. Okay, cool. It sounds like it's just a matter of time. Liz, what's stopping you from doing that now? Like what needs to happen in two years for you to move to that family? I, I gotta like, uh, I'm waiting for the market to go up. Oh, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm trying to net like a certain amount of money here. Okay, so Liz, it sounds like as long as this makes financial sense, you'd want to move over to your uh, family in Kentucky, right? Yeah, that's the pre-close. And if you, if you don't know like the scripts, I have an entire video that explains the framework of how you set an appointment. Um, it goes over all the scripts. Uh, I'll, I'll put the video, I'll put the video in the link below. I'll put the video, I'll put the link to the video in the description below. Uh, but after he agrees, like, so it, it sounds like as, lo as long as we can make this make financial sense, you'd want to make your move to Kentucky. Yeah. After he gives me that yes, okay, great. So then, Liz, before we make any decisions, let's get together and go over exactly how we can make this fi make financial sense now instead of waiting two years out to see your family. And if it does make financial sense, you can make a decision from there. I've got time today at four or six. What would work best for you? Okay, so now you set an appointment, but realistically, statistically, most of these people will not be ready to meet anytime soon. So your goal here is to go for the email close. Okay, well, look, Dustin, it sounds like it's just a matter of time before you make this decision. It's just a matter of um, the market going up. Liz, I'd, I'd love to, I'd love to, when it comes time, I'd love to help you make this move. You mind if I stay in touch? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Liz, I'm going to send you my info so you have it. That way you can just reach out to me whenever. What's a good email for you? Okay. Set daily you, don't need to, you don't need to, you don't need to do that. All right. So that now what I do here is um, in the create notes section. Yep. I'm going to move my little box. 
There's a create note section, and I'm going to write in uh, wants to move to Kentucky to be with family in two years when market goes up. Has to make financial sense. Okay. And then he's going to tell me his email, um, email dot email dot com. I just type it in here because you want to. If to add in an email, you need to click this, add email, and then, okay, I'm well, saying email.email.com is in, oh, email at email.com, save. All right, and now his email's in there. And when you have your, so if you email integrations.calltools.com, they can add in a button here, or they can, they'll add in a button here that says, for me, it's follow up boss. So if I click that follow up boss button, everything in this screen gets transferred over to my CRM. So my notes get here. I need to save the contact first, but okay. So now the notes are in here. So now the notes get transferred into this lead. This lead gets automatically created in my follow up boss. The name, the phone number, the email, the address, the notes, it all gets auto uploaded into my CRM. So if you want that integration, like you need to, you need to contact um, integrations at calltools.com to create that button for you and just press that button and all that information gets popped into your CRM. So now it's time for um, clicking a disposition. Let's say Let's say like this is a lead that gave me all this information and he wants to make a move in the next few years. I'm going to press lead captured. Okay. And I've categorized this lead as someone that I've already called. He's already told me his plans and I never want to call this guy again on call tools, but I will follow up with them on my follow up boss on my CRM. Okay. For you for a while, it's going to be KV core until you get your own CRM. If, you know, but realistically, he didn't want to do this. So I'm going to delete this. <clears throat> and I'm just going to press not interested. He's not interested. But maybe next year, his answers are going to be different. Maybe he will have moving plans. Okay. But for now, I'm just going to press not interested. Now, there's a no contact, which is like sometimes it'll answer. Sometimes what, what will pick up is a uh, voicemail. You know, where like it just didn't go through. That's when I would call no contact and it will redial the no contacts in the future to try to have them pick up. Okay, one thing I do want to show you is recent calls. Okay, if you go to, okay, I'm going to pause the dialer by pressing not available. Now it turns red. Now it's stopped dialing. This call tools is not dialing anything anymore. This is how you like pause. Look, campaign ready? No, it's not. It's not green. Campaigns and queues? Oh, we're still in. Okay. So click on recent calls. And that guy we just talked to is right here. And we can listen to it. Hey, Dustin. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Dustin, hey, this is Aaron. I'm a local realtor over, over in Huma. Huma. I'm calling about a copy of Wellington Huma. Drive. You got it? Okay, it's, it, for mine, it's kind of cutting in and out. Um, but you can, like, you can copy the link to it. You can, like, send it to people. You can send this audio. You can download the audio. Like, this is really cool. Um, just, just in case you want this. You know, Liz, one day, like, when you do have enough transactions, the goal here is to, ha is to hire ISAs inside sales agents to cold call for you. Okay, you don't wanna be doing this forever all day. You wanna hire people, probably in the Philippines, for $6 an hour, and you wanna pay them to make calls for you and do this all day. You wanna have a few of them, and they're gonna be in your call tools account, and you wanna be able to hear how their calls went, okay? So in the future, like for mine, I, my ISA, um, anytime he uploads a lead, he needs to include the file. He needs to include the file URL. He copies it, adds it into the notes um, below 
below the actual notes of the like motivation problem, what his plans are, and then he includes the file. He he includes the link to the um, to the audio. But like, keep that in mind, uh, Liz. You want to eventually get to a point where it's not just you cold calling. You now have sales agents creating these leads for you, while you work on more important things. Okay, but for now, it's this all day. It's this all day, all day, all day. We're just stacking these people that want to buy or sell in the next few years. Um, and you, you have to keep this in mind, Liz. Time is so important. There's, there's three things. I don't, I don't know if you've seen my video on this, but it's three things that create success in this business. First is a lead generation. How many opportunities you create for yourself. So we, we have one, we have created one opportunity for ourselves by getting in front of this homeowner named Dustin, by talking to him. We did one contact, that's one contact, okay? When you have a conversation with him and he answers at least one question of yours, that's one contact. You need like 40 to 60 of these a day to really maximize how much money you could potentially make, okay? You wanna talk to as many people a day as possible. This is lead generation. You want to create as many opportunities as you can by talking to as many people as you can. The second thing is conversion rate. Meaning like, how good are you at convincing these people to meet with you and work with you and give you the answers to your questions? Like how well can you convert these into leads and how well can you convert these into appointments? How well can you convert these into working clients? Okay? Like you have access, you now have access to the Conversion Academy. Like I want you to watch through everything that I have in there because that is designed to teach you how to have a high conversion rate, okay? It teaches you how to sell anyone on anything. It teaches you how to convince anyone to do anything that's in their best interest. That's the conversion rate. And the third thing is time, okay? When you're circle prospecting, time is so, so, so important. Liz, there's gonna be days when like nothing really happens. You didn't find any good leads. Like, you're like, is this even working? You're going to be like, I don't know, like, I haven't sold anything in a few months. You're going to get discouraged. Real estate is a long-term game, and this is a long-term business. It's a discouraging business. But just keep in mind, like, as long as you're doing this all day, which is creating opportunities for yourself, generating leads, creating these people that are like, yeah, I want to sell in four months. I want to sell in three years. I want to sell in 18 months. I want to sell in five years. I want to sell in two years. I want to sell in six months. You're just stacking these people lead generating. With a, with a good conversion rate and lead generation, you are going to stack these leads in your CRM. And they're not going to be ready to do anything at this point. But with time, that third thing, the time, they will be ready soon. They will be ready as time goes on, okay? It's called pipeline maturity. The people in your pipeline, these leads, they need to mature. They need to bake in the oven because like three months will go by and then all of a sudden, three people that you've found in the last few months, they're like, you know what? Things change and like, I need to move now. I need to sell my house. Great. Each of those homes are worth about $321,000, that's 9K per home. In three months, three of them are ready to go. That's 27 grand you made after three months of nothing. And as you keep stacking these, like you're gonna get a lot more of these happening frequently to where you're like, oh shoot, I have 13 pendings, which totals out to like, over a hundred thousand dollars in commissions, I just need to like close them out, you know? But that's because you kept lead generating. That's because you kept stacking these leads. That's because you stayed in the business and like let your pipeline mature. You know, you kept following up. Hey, you want, I, you, you mentioned you wanted to, we, we spoke, we spoke two months ago. You mentioned you wanted to make this move. Um, yeah, hey, hey, we spoke uh, two months ago. You mentioned you want to make the move over to Kentucky to see your family. Is that still a plan? Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, I know you wanted to move in like 
eight months, what's stopping you from doing it now? Well, I got to do this and this and this. Okay, well, it sounds like as long as we can help you do that now, like if we can solve this problem now, would you want to do, would, would you make this move sooner? Yeah, I would. Okay, great. Then look, Liz, before you make any decisions, let's get together and go over exactly what we could do to solve this because me and my team take care of that all the time. And if it makes sense for you, you can make a decision from there. We can meet today at four or six, what works best for you. And on these follow-up calls, your goal is to set an appointment or get a time update. It should never be, Liz. It should never be to check in, hey, Liz, just checking in like you want to move in six months, right? Yeah. Anything I could do for you at this point? No. Okay. I'll call you next month. That was a useless phone call and they will never pick up your phone calls again because you're teaching them, Liz gives me useless phone calls. Okay, so never do that. Never check in. Never ask them if there's anything I could do for you at this point. Even if there is, it's too broad of a question, it's too vague, they'll always say no. Okay? You have to ask, like, what's stopping you from making this move now? What is like what needs to happen for you to make this move? What's stopping you from doing it right now? Well, it's this. Now you have an actual problem to solve. Sometimes you can't solve it, it's fine. Um, but at least you got a time update. You gotta you need to you need to stay on top of these people. Okay? Do you have any questions, Liz? No, so I have watched, watched one of your YouTube videos, videos and, and I, I did learn, learn that, that, you know, to so always make sure you call with a purpose. purpose. And kind, and of kind of yesterday, yesterday you kind of like brushed over it. Over it. Um, don't, don't do useless, useless questions, questions, stuff like, like that. that. So, so I definitely know not to ask, ask what can I, I do for you because you're always, always going to say, say no. no. And, okay. um, yeah. yeah. Do you have any questions about like this whole thing at all, in general? Um, no, yeah, yeah I, don't I don't remember, remember what FNDC means. It's a federal do not call list. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. The great thing is like, the, the thing I love about call tools is that you have 10 phone numbers and if you Google the 10, if you Google your phone numbers, they can't find you, mm -hmm. you know? So if you do call a do not call us number and they're pissed and they want to report you, they can't find you. That's why I always say, hey, this is Aaron. I'm a local realtor in the city name, in Huma. It's going to change every time. Like if it's a different city, like Gray, hey, this is Aaron. I'm a local realtor in Gray. I'm calling about your property in Wellington Drive. You know, I switch it up. I switch it up to be local to them. I don't tell them my, I don't tell, I don't say my, uh, office name. It doesn't matter. I just say I'm a local realtor in gray. I hope you enjoyed that call tools tutorial. If you want to learn exactly how me and my agents took over a hundred listings in one month, click the link in the description below to check out the Conversion Academy. Inside the Conversion Academy is my full database of knowledge of everything that I know about converting a lead into a seller into a appointment and a signed listing agreement at a high conversion rate. It also gives you access to my Discord. These are my agents, and if you join the Conversion Academy, you have access to my Discord where you can cold call with me every day, all day. I'm literally on my Discord, right? I'm on my Discord right now. And I am dialing with my boys all day, every day, unless I'm at an appointment that I need to go on. The Discord includes live role plays with me. Like yesterday I had a guest speaker who did $50 million in sales in the last few years working only with buyers. So he taught everyone exactly what his uh, buyer consultation is. This is a very active and productive Discord. And if you wanna join me on this, if you wanna cold call with me every day, if you wanna have some accountability, if you wanna increase your conversion skills, hop into the Conversion Academy, link is down below. Oh, and don't forget my call tools link is down below for $50 off your first month. My call information link is down below for $200 off your first year. And if you have any questions, just reach out to me on Instagram.